Then to what for? Okay. Yes. You know, I got to so, I got to read that right here. I took my but it's, it's my uh, great niece Sienna's third birthday. Oh my God. All right, so we are live and recording. Okay. All right. First item on the agenda is to speak with Karis about the uh, access agreement. And if that's not the first item on the list, it is now. It is now, yes. Yep, so I sent over through Jack a proposed access agreement. Um, it's a three-year agreement with um, the Marnix uh, to get access to um, the former landfill property um, and utilize the schedule um, in Atlas's uh, proposal, uh, and then just you know use some of my own language. Um, uh, essentially, uh, you know everybody knows that you're going to go on the property. Uh, the the town or the consultant has to give them five days notice when they're going to go on the property, um, and then you know they're not going to interfere with the property or try not to interfere with the property, and and Marnik isn't going to. You know, condition the access in such a way that interferes with the town being able to do uh, to do its work, and then um, you know you'll share the uh, results with them, which is pretty standard, and um, and that doing the the monitoring and the investigation is not any admission. So it's very simple, pretty straightforward, uh, and you know, happy to answer any questions. So I have a question. Yep. Um, from back in the day, that piece of property that he um, adulterated, so to speak, um, is he paying? Are they paying for that, or are we still paying for that? Because we've been paying for that, which we shouldn't have been paying for. But did did we change that? I mean, no, that has not been changed at this point in time. At this point, the town is still doing all of the monitoring work. There has not been any, and there hasn't been any decision to go ahead and and we would have to talk about that in a different setting. Um, I, I, I don't wanna talk about that in an open meeting if the town wants to do something different, but for the moment, the town is doing what the town continues to do. And this is to formalize the access that they've been getting orally through the consultant. Um, but to put something in writing. This doesn't change the current status. Thank you. I understand if that's and I but um, I just wondered if, if if we went through the exercise of determining what the actual cost difference would be compared to knowing that everything was in our control. Um, it might not be worth the exercise to to separate future costs out. We have to look at the dollar. But in, it's my understanding that the property is sort of for sale now. I haven't been made aware beyond the rumors, but I'm not aware of any official. Well, no, they haven't put a for sale sign up. But um, I mean, Lonnie back was wanting to buy it. Yeah. How would the this agreement, Karis, does this factor in the uh, situation if the property was sold? Uh, to nope, you'd have to get uh, a new agreement with the new owner, um, and that would be, you know, the only the only type of agreement that would run with the land is an easement agreement that is recorded and you know an instrument like that. So you'd have to get a new you'd have to get a new agreement with new owners. That, that to me is a potential issue. Having to have having to do that. May I? Yes. Uh, Karis, this is Alan. Um, the, the, the two things that I saw, um, and I, I may just not understand the terminology um, or what is considered written notice today. Um, in the past, we've it's been a phone call to a answering machine. Uh, five five days notice. Uh, does an email qualify as a written notice? 
in writing at least five days. It can be a letter and that's the town or the consultants. They can send a letter saying we're coming on to the property um, or there can be a, you know, uh, an email. If there's an email address that's good, that's sufficient as well. It doesn't specify um, that it has to be. It doesn't say that it has to be mailed, certified, but I do think that you should have a written record of providing notice every time you go on the property. Okay, the next question is um, the three years. Um, it is highly likely with Tom's uh, conversations with the DEP that this is going to go on forever. Yep, you can only enter into a three year agreement um, unless Otherwise, you would have to go to town meeting to get authority to enter in something greater than a three year agreement. And given the fact that the ownership may change, I wouldn't recommend doing that. I would okay. recommend just having to, you know, hey, you know, we're still doing the work. We, we're still doing the work. We're doing it on our dime. We'd like to renew that agreement. And look, if you can't get access, then you go to DEP. Okay. Um, to summarize this, just so that we're not going on and on. Um, I'm going to make the assumption and please correct me. Um, you're the town council. You're advising us what is best for the town. And this is probably the best we're going to get of a not so great situation in order to carry forward, whether it's who's going to pay the bill or if we have to deal with the property change in hands. I I'm, I'm taking it as you're telling us this is about the best route to take? Well, we talked last time uh, about doing the sampling. We didn't talk about changing up who's doing the sampling. Uh, and, and Atlas had put together, I think, an agreement for you and was charging you some amount of money to, to put, to, or was going to charge you some amount of money to put the agreement together. And I said, I can do that for a lot less than fifteen hundred dollars or whatever what it, whatever it was they were going to charge you. We have not yet had a conversation about whether or not you want to look into. We've looked into the records, and I and I I've told you what I thought about what the records said, which is it's not clear that the entire responsibility is for the town. Uh, but the town has been doing it, you know, from the beginning, so it could exercise control over it. Um, if you want to have that that discussion, um, I think we need to have an executive session to talk about that um, at a you know another date when I can come to Mendon and we can sit in a room together and talk about it. Okay, so at, at this time, th this is the best way to move forward. Correct. Before going to other steps that we don't know where they're going to go. That's right. That's okay. correct. All right. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I'll say to my fellow board members that if, if you know, the three year agreement is, is the standard. And like you said, Tom, the incremental cost for the testing, we're already paying it. And the the actual split might not be worth. Well, it just seems like logistically, what we know these wells are in relation to how the court segmented those parcels and the responsibility in the court decision. It seems like most of the wells are actually on the properties that were deemed to be the responsibility of the town amended, and there may be a set that might be related to the back parcels that would consider the responsibility of the, of the property owner. So it seems like well, we have five sets of wells. We at least yeah. have six rounds six. and five water. All right, yeah. so take five and a half. Yep. So on that five and a half, I, I think at least four would def definitively be the responsibility of the town and then given their logistical position in relation to the parcels. But then you could argue that two of them one of them being the one that broke. C and D. 
I think C and D. Well, C and D represents the land, but I'm thinking in terms of the position of the wells. Well, isn't that isn't that the well, where the wells are on that? A, B, and C is Mendens. Right. The right. wells that John's talking about is on parcel C, which is Mendens. D and E were the properties that he was responsible for. Right. So there are no wells, as far as we know, on D and E at all. Well, you you could argue position-wise that the one in the upper far left actually relates to C to D. Yes, correct. And potentially, the one that broke kind of gets up because that's on that far end too. Mm -hmm. Potentially, but that's why I say, definitively, I could think of one set. Because I see to me, I, I think there's two, but that's you only might be right. because I I was there at the time. And so if that's the I case, was doing it and. When, 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 you know, we'd have to go through the exercise and just, right. it'd be easy to do right. how many exactly what and the cost of each one. To Karis's to point, we would if that were to go that way, now there's no saying that they're going to share, if they're paying for their own testing for those wells, that they're going to share the information with us and we're the ones that are on the hook to the DEP. So that's if, why that's why I think in general, it's probably just a better road and an easier road to continue the path we've been taking, accept the cost of the process to do what we've been doing so that we have the oversight, we have the guide, the guidelines to kind of make it happen. But the one question I would ask is, you know, we talked about the putting it actually as a deed restriction, Karis, on the property itself with the registry of deeds. What if might you be involved in that? Yeah, you can't deed restrict somebody else's property. I think we talked about it's on it's noted properly on the assessor's cards now yeah um, you could record the dep order um with respect to the town's parcels um but you can't deed restrict somebody else's property that's for the the private owner to do you can deed restrict the town's parcels you can't deed restrict somebody else's unless they're willing to agree to that and and not for nothing while the monitoring is work and expense, the real issue is the maintenance of the cap and the landfill. And, right. you know, that's an issue that has not yet arisen, but might down the road. And that's that might be you might want to hold your powder for that, because that could be a lot more expensive if there's repair, you know, repair or maintenance of the cap down the road. And you might want to think about, you know, what's the best that might be a situation where you might want to find some contribution from the other party for that. Well, we do have a maintenance element happening now. It's not the cap, but there's a maintenance element with the basin. Well, it's related to the cap because we, we have a catch basin that needs pretty much failed that needs to be rebuilt. Whether we uh, are able to enlist the highway department to do it, if they have the time, they have the knowledge, or okay. we or we have to hire an outside contractor to do it, which we just left the budget meeting uh, for the next year's budget. And we we added money into our budget for landfill, anticipating being prepared if we had to hire an outside contractor. And there are some depressions in the cap that need to be filled. So at this point, I would say that repairs and maintenance that need to be done outside of testing I would say is very manageable. There hasn't been a catastrophic failure. So if Ms. Monick signs this access agreement that Karis has prepared for us, we're in better shape than we are not out. Mm -hmm. Well, the other question just to, I just want to continue the thought of the, of the deed restriction Karis, and I understand what you're saying. Um, Sometimes in the past, we've had situations when we've talked with Tom Ryder. Yep, around the lake. And situations have occurred, better. and and the conversation has gone to as part of the agreement to put a deed put a deed restriction on the property. So how is it in that case we're able to do That's a deed what, restriction? It's if, if we'll look the septic system, so that the the current septic design is three bedrooms, so the property would be restricted to only three bedrooms. You could, that's when you are uh, presby systems, okay. um, not necessarily deed restriction, but they do get recorded. Well, they, we've always used the, the term deed restriction is always Correct. in the wording. Mm -hmm. So I've always assumed that we have there's an element that we have 
if you implement a deed restriction onto a property. By agreement of the property owner, though. Like that's right. All right, By so, so that's the the kind of missing. So the so when that's happened, we right, it's it, a property owner has agreed to that. It, it, now right. that I'm thinking through For the process, most of, mostly right. septic repairs. We're not going to approve that septic system unless the deed restriction goes along yeah. with it. So it almost happens by default. By default. Yeah. In order to get that system approved, yeah. the engineer okay. tells the people they're working for that, hey, listen, these okay. are the conditions that the Board of Health will sign off. And it's right. very point, common though. with okay. regards to septic systems. Okay. Very common. If I could probably just make one point. Please, Jack. When the courts decided that parcels A, B, and C were down on Mendes' responsibility, D, and E were, whatever his name was, Bruce's responsibility, the wells were put in by the town of Mendes because we, I would assume, had to get a well driller to put it in on those parcels of land that were deemed by the courts our responsibility. Correct. So I don't understand, maybe I'm thinking too much into it, that yeah, there are wells, but Bruce, you wouldn't be paying for those because they were drilled on those parcels of land that was deemed. Well, what ended up happening, on that, I think, and this is probably just a kind of uh, a guesstimate on my part, Karis, but looking at the history, knowing that there were no test results that ever went back to the state for some 20 years, we ended up getting that non-compliance notice. Right. At, at that point, it started the wheels turning within that Board of Health I said, hey, we got to start doing something. And, and I think it was realized at that point that the, there were, I think, at least two or three wells that were done initially, but it was determined that those wells, when we actually sent a company out there, and that they, they were listed in the letters, we had a couple of companies look at it, they deemed them to be no good, mm -hmm. and they had to be redone. And in addition, additional wells were required. So that's why we ended up with as many as we did. But that was all on the heels of getting a letter from the DEP after realizing that Menden didn't hasn't been submitting testing. I think the movement was, let's get on it, let's get it done, let's start getting a compliance with DEP, get the wells done, start doing the testing, and then then we're in good shape. I, right. I think that's how it all happened. Sure. Right. Yeah. Right. So but you it's a good point. You're, you're, you're right. Yeah. So this this access agreement which Atlas suggested, which Karis was willing to prepare for us, right. representing the interest of the town. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, it is probably at this time a, a logical move to go forward, and at least we're locked in for three years. Yeah. We have a uh, property owner at, at present that is comfortable with us, so we have a good means of communication. So until, to take Karis's suggestion, uh, in, until things in the cap or whatever would get out of control, right. we, we've got a pretty good path to go on right now. And, and it's at the, the time frame of three years, only if property's not sold within three years. Well, that's and right. Then we have to revisit this all over again mm -hmm. with the new owner. Yeah. Well, we have to, work we have to do it. We have to do it anyway. But Karis pointed out because it's a landfill, right. then. Even for someone to buy it, if any development, it would be very controlled development because you can't just dig up where the landfill is right. and put a solid hole in it. I don't know if you know this, Karis, um, or not, because this is kind of such a, a different situation where it's private land that used to be a landfill. Do you know if the state, uh, the DEP, could actually uh, interject? and potentially be able to do a, a deed restriction of some kind because of what it used to be? Uh, typically, again, it's still private property. So, you know, they have uh, Fourth and Fifth Amendment rights. Um, and so the, um, the DEP only gets involved in deed restrictions when they're doing cleanups of hazardous waste sites, not landfills. So it's not under their solid waste and, and landfill program, but it's under their brownfields program. Um, okay. And they do have an option for deed restrictions depending on the end use of the property. Um, and you have to work with the state to, and sometimes they impose that as part of the cleanup requirement. Again, usually when they're doing the cleanup, that's not what happens in a landfill. It's a different regulatory scheme. I am not aware of, uh, you know, now 
I'm not aware of the state imposing a, a deed restriction like that on a landfill because the, you know, the fact that it's a landfill and the documentation, anybody who's doing reasonable due diligence should find the documents and understand that it's a landfill and anybody who digs um, would would find that out as well. Um, but uh, so, yeah, I'm not aware of that. OK, I, I would think anybody that would show up on that property and would see test wells yep. would start asking questions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so I think we have, you know, at this time, this is probably, you know, it's going to put us in a, in a better position yeah. than where we are yeah. now. Um, and, you know, we'll just have to pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. I just have a couple of Please. questions. Karis, um, with regards to uh, the monitoring and the investigations where you listed the, um, the quarterly, the semi-annual, and the annual, should we also add, just because you, you have itemized them, the possibility exists that the DEP, after they finish their reviews, may require the town to also perform a third party inspection, or would that follow annually? Would you think that we should list that, or would it follow underneath the annual landfill inspections? That's under the annual landfill inspection. That's the third party inspection that is required that Atlas does every year. Okay. And then the other thing I noticed was um, up in the first paragraph, uh, we have the address as 28, but down in the second paragraph, we listed the address as 18. 18. Yep. I realized that. That's just a typo. I have to fix that. I also realized that under the notification um, that it says the town will provide Marnick with a copy of all test results. And I want that, that to say the town through its consultants, employees, contractors, service, or agents shall provide, will provide Marnick with a copy of all test results. Um, so I want that to be on Atlas. As, uh, I'm not sure if that's part of your deal or not, but, um, and does Atlas file everything with you, Jack, when they, when they get the results? Yes, they sent us the report before they send it to DEP. Okay, all right. So it's not a big deal for you to send a copy of that on to, on to the landowner. No, it is not. No big deal. Okay, all right. Okay, then then I'm okay with that. So, um, so yep, I the the address needs to be updated um, in that in that one paragraph. Correct. Uh, but I would recommend that you vote it subject to. You know that correction that Jack and I can make between us, and and I would ask that you um, vote the chair to sign on behalf of the the uh, sign on behalf of the board, or if you all want to sign it, that's fine. We'll just update the signature block, whatever you prefer. Okay, so good with me. Good with me. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll do a formal motion. Yes. yes. All right. So, I move that we accept the agreement as uh, written, except with the, the uh, corrections that will be made. And uh, I'll second the motion, motion as well. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. So as soon as, we, as soon as we get that updated copy, call me and I'll come in and sign it. Yeah. Switch off. So I'll make the second motion that the chair um, signature is sufficient to put on this agreement. Um, to advise the board. Right. Yeah, okay. there you go. There we go. Right. All right. Thank you, Karis. Karis, thank you very much. You're thank very you. welcome. Have a good night, everybody. Take care. You too. Thank you. Good night. Bye bye. Bye. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Top of the morning to you. Top of the morning to you. And you know, they have a second party. You saw it when someone says that to you. And you're not supposed to say, and the rest of the day to you. That's right. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next Thank item on the agenda, the second draft letter for the property type tank review. Thank you, sir. So this is the uh, updated yes. version. We drafted it.
Good. Um, well, I had a, I had a thought on, on, a, on a little tweaking. Um, before I got to that, just a question in general. Hopefully, you know. Um, where does the operation and maintenance plan come from? Well, like if somebody says to an owner, sends this to an owner. From their engineer. Right. So it's come from the engineer. That's what we did when, when I was working with Shea Engineering. I mean, I was very uh, particular because I was concerned that not everybody would be, you know, I'm like calling in. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and so we, we would talk to them and we tell them exactly what they needed to do and how they needed to do it. And when the, you know, their bell rang, that, that meant they only had a certain amount of time. They had to, you know, activate that and get the, their, uh, get the pumping done and get the report back and blah, blah, blah. So, so that you would know, A, that it was working yeah. and B, that it, you know, they were being diligent. So this isn't a plan that we could uh, get or accept from the home. Somehow we have to know yeah. that this is a well, plan. Well, you that have the plan. You have the subject system plan. You have the, the that you should have that or. Well, this specifically is the operation and maintenance plan. Right. So what I'm just trying to determine is, is this an, an operation and maintenance plan document that we expect to see coming from an engineer who did that tight tank? See, I wouldn't think that. Okay, because if, if I got this letter and I had a tight tank, now granted, we're being part of the board, I have a little more knowledge, but so it's my understanding that I could answer it. I have an agreement with triple a septic system yeah. pumping that's right that's, and yeah. uh i call them when the alarm goes off and here are the here is the yeah and they they come they pump it and they tell me the condition when they leave of my tight tank but what he's citing there is just a, the individual homeowner responding with a paragraph of what he's going to do versus a what I would call when you said engineer, a formal no, I, I, I said, and I said, as the engineer, you are, that's your responsibility to tell that person. You're not, after, after you put your, your bag and your stuff in your car, you're out of there. You, that's not your septic system. That is not, if something goes wrong with that septic system, then they come to you as the engineer. But from the moment you step off that property, yeah. it's their responsibility. The, home, but homeowner. the homeowner. But so when you, you give them the doc, you, the document, think, t telling them this is what you have to do. Right. So you, you kind of, well now you kind of mix two different things. You talked about a document. Well, I'm coming. saying I'm just saying you you give them a to do list if, if if you want to call it that instead of a document. Document sounds like. Well, well, that's what I'm trying to get. I think you know where I'm kind of coming from. Is the expectation, because I, I showed this to a couple of people, mm -hmm. and that was one of the questions that came from mm -hmm. a few people. Is where do I get the plans from? Mm -hmm. Who's providing well, the plans? See, I would think Well, I, you, all we need the, the homeowner to do is approve, prove to us that they have an agreement with a reputable septic hall. So, so that, septic they, hall. that they right. call on a routine basis. Right to service and give them the current condition of their system. Right. Now, that's nothing to say that 18 months down the road, AAA jacks their price up and the people make a new agreement right. with a new reputable step to call. Right. And that agreement and relationship could go on for two, three, four years before it may change again. Right. Okay. So that's the type of, like, I have an agreement to have my oil burner service. Once a year, I call the same guy, and he comes and services my oil burner. So, what's the expectation? So that's the agree. That's the agreement that right. they're proving that they have a relationship. That's an agreement. But what's the expectation from the Board of Health to equal what we're asking as far as what meets the criteria of an operation and maintenance plan? Well, unless they have a plan and they're maintaining the the tight tank, that's, you know, we just want to confirm that that's in fact that they the understand. So just a general statement then. Yeah. So, so there's no actual follow-up or agreement signed by ABC septic for the homeowner. 
Right. They understand. But the other thing, right. The other thing is, is that it opens up the door for them to call up on the phone and say, hey, what's a plan? And we say, well, how are you maintaining a system now? Oh, Joe Blow from Idaho is coming, you know, yearly or whatever that right. is. Can you yeah. put that in an email to me, please? Right. That's what I'm kind of yeah. getting. And, and right. it could come from a septic caller. I mean, it, it's AAA exactly. septic could call up on behalf of the property owner. Right. right. Well, they should because they're pumping. Right. And say, I've been pumping. engaged to, as called. I've been engaged to pump that tight tank and to mm -hmm. give them the current condition of the tank. So yes. until further notice, I'm I'm in. Well, I kind of was like on the thing with Tom, like when I was starting to get the stuff in, I was expecting something from like Grand Septic, there's an operational maintenance plan from Grand Septic for 175 Blackstone Street. All right, they check off for their tank. Next. Right. Well, it may come that way. Well, they should be sending. They, the, the pumper is the same. The, the pumper is the same guy who pumps a septic system is the same guy that's pumping a tight tank. Mm -hmm. So when he pumps the septic system, he gives you the report. When he pumps the septic tank, the tank, he gives you a report. The tight tank, he gives you a report. They're not doing that. They're not giving us a report, the tight tank people. But, but I mean, you actually given them what I would call an operation and maintenance plan. Does it matter of whether they're giving them an operation and maintenance plan or what? It could be caught up it, in the garbage. Yeah, yeah, it could What's be. It? Listen, um, listen to me for one second. Just one, okay? Just one second. It could be Joe Blow the rag picker does it on this day. Then he calls Tom Simmons, the other guy, no, and no, he no. does it. Yeah. He doesn't have to have a maintenance agreement. He just as long as when that bell rings, he gets it pumped. I don't care if he gets it pumped by Jack the Ripper. And, right. Jack, and then Jack the Ripper gives us the report and, give, and, and the guy gets his report and pays. And actually, we wouldn't even have to ask this question if Jack could go to the file and see the Tom Fick that has a tight tank and see oh. Oh, six yeah. weeks, yeah. eight weeks, yeah. Oh, 12 weeks. They must not have been around too much. Right. But you'd have the report. So if you had the pumping records. Well, that's the problem. It's getting that, the pumping records. Yes. Right. That's, that's sort of saying exactly. that you have an that you understand right. how to operate it yeah. and you have a maintenance agreement without saying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, so that's what I'm trying to get at because it's me. I know what an operation and maintenance plan is for different things. There are formal operation and maintenance plans out there. For different things, underground tanks and storage mm -hmm. tanks and so forth. Right. So what I'm just trying to get at is what is our standard of acceptance to meet the criteria of an operation maintenance plan. So what we're saying is it could be a combination of different things. Mm -hmm. There's no one set way. So I'm just trying to understand that we're all on the same page as to what we all believe will be an acceptable operation and maintenance plan. Either. Well, no, I mean, it, it's, it's a really good question because I don't think I've ever seen one in writing. Well, what I, what I, again, what I'm saying I haven't is seen one yet. I have on a plan itself, okay. on a tight tape plan itself, it will tell you what, what you have to do. Right, right. Yeah. But but that that's, like I said, when we did tight tanks, which I did, did a tight tank, Yeah. okay? Put it in, make sure it worked, she told them what had to be done, she gave them the plan with the septic plan, like like we see for everybody's septic plans. Yeah. And well, the as built, I mean, it, 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 yeah, it, there really isn't one for tight I mean, for tight tank, it's, yeah. that's a little, okay, you know, plus, you're watching, yeah. you go watch Just the whole thing go in, it goes, right. in. Okay. you know, yeah. you watch that go in. Yeah. It's it's a big big freaking tank. Okay, it's how the size yeah. right thing, you know, and it's a big like this, you know. So what you what your responsibility is as the engineer, and I was like over the top because that's how I am. I wanted to make sure that they knew exactly what they had to do. Okay. What and it's pretty damn simple. When the bell rings, 
you have a certain amount of time to get your pumper in there to pump it. Yeah. And that pumper has the responsibility of giving that to Jack. Just, just the pumping record. Correct. Yeah, That's but, all we care about. Right, but on the vaccine record, hang on, hang on. And she closed it, and you closed with that's all we can. Well, the maintenance of it, that guy would say, well, wait, you know, I, when I did the pumping, I noticed that there was a crack in the, as we put it in, there was a, a crack in the, the pipe going down, and that probably should be repaired. They will do that. Okay. That's the thing. They will tell the guy, too, and, you know. Don't they cite that sometimes? Right. Uh, pumping mm -hmm. report. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. You know. So are we saying that basically just the pumping record suffices as the operation and maintenance plan? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that. Yes. Okay. That's what I'm, I'm just trying to. I'm saying that it that's it's the same thing that you it's, know. It's, it's what it's, it's what you're saying is one and the same. Yes. And if you're the same view. Well, I, I think it's a combination of things. That's what it sounds yeah. like. It's a combination. But it's not. It's not like a contract. In writing that the homeowner signs and the person providing it would sign. Yeah, I, I haven't it's seen it's that yet. You just, you know. But I mean, let's face it. If you know, if someone who has a tight tank and all of a sudden they get a smell and the tight tank alarm hasn't gone off, right? Not only does the septic caller have to come and pump the tight tank, but he might have to check the alarm. Right. right? So that would be conveyed to the septic caller. Hey, listen, I didn't hear the alarm, but I'm getting a smell. The septic caller is going to, he's going to check the alarm and make, hey, the alarm needs to be replaced. We, we need to replace the alarm and we need to call the electrician. You know? Well, those are all the practical elements of. But it's a part of the maintenance plan as well. Right. That's, it, that's those, the, what you're describing is all the day to day. Right. I won't say it happens day to day, day to day. Right. And all the things right. that happen with mm -hmm. regard to having a tight tank. Mm -hmm. Right, right. What and I'm the trying, of it. Right. So what I'm going to get at is what is the Board of Health looking at from a an acceptable Consistent form of it, acceptable. Let me see if I can. What is the Board of Health looking at as an acceptable piece of information to satisfy this request? Consistent maintenance. So just a record of consistent. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Right. But but I wonder if we were to talk to Tom Ryder. I wonder if his suggestion would be something to write. I don't All know. I can say is from the standpoint of being an environmental engineer and having worked in yeah. the business yeah. for all those years that I did, and you know, also did did everything before, did it, her job and your job and his, all those years, that worked out very well. That, but again, there weren't so many rules saying, oh, well, we need to get your pumping things. Now, now there are very consistent rules. Yeah. We need to get your pumping records. And so that's our responsibility, in, in my opinion, is that when we see, and which is what we've been doing, yes. what we've been seeing that we're not already pumping markets for this guy. What the heck is going on? So, well, to, I understand the pumping market thought. I mean, that's but that's the same thing, is, is that that's part of the maintenance. Let me just say this when you're talking about tight tanks, yep. that's that's part and parcel of maintenance. Right. So, and the reason I'm asking this question is is I because some people are not. Are not going to know what an operation and maintenance plan is, and they're going to call him. Well, we're not asking for an operation and maintenance plan. Well, yeah. Well, we are. Well, we are. Well, we are. That's but pretty, here's the thing. So, that's that's what, that's what I know, but it, like, I think it's important that we understand here at this level what the expectation is. Well, you're right. Coming from, if we're going to give the ask, we're going to put out the ask that we understand what's the acceptable response. The home Everything the that we discussed, yeah. because ultimately the operation and maintenance plan 
is by approval of the authority. So if we see that, cons that is consistent, and let's face it, with a tight tank, there has to be consistent maintenance. For sure. Because otherwise yeah. you're going to have huge problems. Right. So as a board, and if we get the pumping records and we see, then we know that the, the system is actively being pumped. And at the same time, also, to Alan's point, hey, we noticed a crack in the pipe part of the maintenance. If we have the proof that, you know, this act of consistent pumping of it, that would be acceptable to the authority as a maintenance plan. Right. Yeah, it's almost like they're, they're demonstrating to us that they're doing what they're supposed Correct. to do right. without talking about it. Yeah, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page as to what is going to be acceptable to meet the criteria of the ask. For an operation to make this split. I, That's I, don't, I don't think I thought about it enough. Oh, well, Tom's thinking, like, if I got this in the mail and read this, like, well, I better call my second guy up and say, hey, I need a conflict maintenance plan. Right. And I would be expecting a contract where I would sign it saying that I'm under agreement for this person to, for a year, maintain and, it. And somewhere along the line, talking about tight things, I think I remember something to that effect that someone had an agreement for a period of time with a, a singular uh -huh. uh -huh. so because you brought this up and got us all thinking about it i wonder what tom ryan's opinion is because we don't have anyone's operation plan so to speak on file so we don't really have an example to go by to know entirely what we're asking for. Well, it seems to me that the operation and maintenance plan is having it pumped. Right. Paying attention for the alarm, not right. ignoring it. Just having it pumped. And, and of course, if the alarm boat doesn't go off, you, you know something's wrong. So they're going to call the guy and say, you know, something's going on here. Because, like, maintenance of a septic system is also pumping the tank yeah and making sure you don't have a leakage here and there and everywhere and, and staying you know? again i should be playing on the words where it says you are required to provide the board with an operation maintenance plan for the board's review and approval if what like the examples of such an operation pumping records or agreement between the septic hall and something. Right. That's a good idea. Right. Put that in there. Right. We could revise. That's a good idea. And, and I think Alan's idea about checking with Tom. Mm -hmm. yeah. we'll go back but, to the but we, you know, sort of giving an example. But unfortunately, we don't have anything in our files that's been submitted to us. Right. Yeah. The only thing I've, I've ever seen was on the plan itself when the for the tight tank. Right. That yeah, they the call it's an operation mm -hmm. and maintenance plan, right. um, and it spelled out, you know, and basically what it was was that when the bell line comes on, <laughs> you'll have it maintained, right. you'll provide those pumping records to the um, yeah. Board of Health, and you're responsible for any repairs um, to the system. Right. right. Yeah, but. Which the pumper should report to us. Mm -hmm. Correct. Well, that's the whole idea. I mean, this is one thing that we've just never that's been true. in Title V for quite a while, but it's never been something that we picked up on until right. recently mm -hmm. that we should have in our, in our records, right? It may be, too, that in the, you know, when going back to the drawing board on the letter, that we find, that we realize that the pump, if we're getting consistent pumping records, then that's the maintenance plan. So maybe the letter would be, then um, address to the ones who have not provided the pumping records. Okay. That may be instead of to the ones that have already, who have consistently provided us with pumping records, obviously they're maintaining their tight tank. It's those properties that have not. And so if, if that meets that definition of what you described, then yeah, you can do it that way. Mm -hmm. like that's why I'm just wondering. Right, but you, you, you're, you're, we all have to be in agreement. Well, we all have so to know. We, if we're asked the question, right. they all, everybody gets the same answer. Same answer. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You, can't, you can't call Tom and then see Jack down, walking right. down the street and ask him exactly. and get it. So 
we we do have to yeah narrow it down so that we're, we're all going in the same direction even though we all in our own words sort of mean the same thing mm -hmm. We got to use the same language. Well, there's different variables that are brought to the table and brought to the table in the last 15 minutes. So I think we need to understand. And I think a call to Tom is a key step to do it because he's our title by guy. Mm -hmm. And this is a title by requirement. And I think what when I read operation and maintenance, I, I'm thinking exactly what you're saying. I'm used to reading plans. And the plan says when the alarm goes off, there's X number of gallons before you're in trouble or X number of days based mm -hmm. on the design before so, you're in trouble. Can I just read this to you? Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> An operation and maintenance plan acceptable to the approval authority shall be implemented, which requires monitoring the system to ensure proper operation and maintenance. So when they if you the pumping record that is showing that it is working right and and if it's not at that when the guy's pumping it i mean it's his responsibility to say to the homeowner look this isn't working or you've got a crack or something like that which you know what do you think so? yeah <laughs> no i no i, I actually understand so but so i just wanted to confirm i'll be equating it one of the same is a pumping record. That's what keeps coming back here. Well, I, I guess the key would be routine pumping records. Consistent. Consistent. Correct. Consistent. Right. Consistent. Right. Consistent. Right. Consistent. Right. Routine. Yes. Right. Yes. You know, it, it, that would that that's actually demonstrating it without doing anything else. Because now again, when the board asked me to go back to the files and like look for these operations, they like, I'm just passing the pumping records, like no, no plan, no plan. <laughs> Right. But they even have consistent pumping records, and they are able to work with a plan on it. Right. Yeah. Now that I know it's pumping records consistent. Right. Yeah. Well, if you don't have one, and if you're you not, really got you, you really got to think about it to get it right. Is that that's a problem when yes. they're not pumping? If you if you don't have the record of them pumping, then that's a problem. Something you well, need to know that's, 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 that. that's a picture of the problem, right? Not seeing that it potentially right. demonstrates right. Well, issue. there there may be an issue, or right. they may be just right. lackadaisical and they don't know it or they whatever. Right. But they should know it now because we've sent them two letters. Oh, well, yeah. And uh maybe we should, you know, I'm um so just tag it those properties that have not provided us with consistent pump records. That's what I want to do. That's what I. So if we go back to the files, we can look to see for consistency mm -hmm. pump records. Those properties are all set, but it's the properties that have not. Mm -hmm. Correct. That's what that. That's my thought. Okay. So you know, and we should put the hammer down on that. Yeah. In the interim, I think it's a good idea to get Tom's perspective and take on that freely, because it may just be that he's going to say, yeah, basically it's mm -hmm. interpreted as a pumping record. And, and that's then, the case. Right. Yeah. And, and then we can note that underneath that letter I. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that so if we do realize that when we redraft it to those properties that have not provided us with an operation and maintenance plan to Jack's point, i.e. consistent pumping markets, right. that maybe would be the flavor of the letter. Okay. Yeah, only, oh, you know what Tomberg is opinion? As a, uh, well, just as an ad, that was only my first question. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> now, if we're going to change, since we're going to change the format, this may or may not apply, but in the body of the second two paragraphs that were there, mm -hmm. I have had a suggestion for a rewrite, but it may not apply because if we're going to redraft the whole thing to be different, then it may not be, may not apply. I just thought, and looking at those second and third paragraphs, I thought maybe a little better organization of the information. So I, I, I did a, a draft of those two paragraphs to reflect that. But to Colleen's point, if the scope of the letter changes, it, it may negate that anyway. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because we may realize that the 
operation and maintenance plan of the pump, the consistent pump records. Right. So then our letter would be redrafted to those properties that have not provided them. And when we say you're required, you're using the same verbiage to provide the board with an operation maintenance plan, i.e., to Jack's point, right. consistent pumping records. And leave it at that and then send it out to those properties. Mm -hmm. Because I think that if the board, to, you know, the regulation here um, in number I, an operation and maintenance plan is whatever is acceptable to the improvement authority. Right. right. Thinking about it, going back to when you have a tight tank and you do the plan approval and Tom Ryder gives us uh, his technical point of view as to the design, I would almost think that a new property owner, especially the new property owner with a new system, would provide us with I have made arrangements with AAA septic to pump my tank when needed. And I would consider that an acceptable maintenance plan. So maybe you would only see that extra when it's new, because that way there we know that they read everything that Joyce would have put out and they understand it and that they've reached out to someone who's licensed in town to do that. And then we would see that they were demonstrating it by those Maybe records coming in. into, yeah. Because not everybody's going to do what Joyce did right. for a client when they get a new no, tank. No, no, that way there. Yeah, now they're aware of it. See, like I, I like the plans that I've, you know, that I'm familiar with with regards to tight tanks. That plan is right there, right. So, so they, they know, know they know it right there. Right, once exactly. that plan's approved, it's like here you go. Right. You know, and maybe what you could do after talking with Tom is for new tight tanks is put some put that verbiage there right on the plan. Yeah, maybe maybe that would be the only time that we would want to see something in writing, so to speak. Mm -hmm. That would be like the original agreement. You know, um, and the only other time I would think that something like that is if you had a new owner to the property. Because now it's sort of like double checking that the right information was passed on to the new homeowner, but I don't know how you track all that. Well, you know, hopefully the, that when you're selling a, a piece of property and it has a tight tank and, and people come from Boston where they've always just been able to wash away, that you say to them, you know, by the way, a, we have a septic system here that has been approved, and this is the plan, or it may be so old, but they don't know it. You know, they don't have the plan, yeah. or they have a, a cesspool, which I hope we don't have any of those anymore, because I think they are really out of thing. But I, I think when you, when you buy a property, should you know it should be part of the property that's just a tight tank there or, but i mean i'm not sure because when we bought our house we didn't you know we both my husband and i grew up in uxbridge and that we had you know sewer oh yeah, yes and then we went to north Hayley in northampton and the town of those City, so we that we had sewer there. We went to Norfolk, and we didn't own the house; we were renting, so we didn't care. We didn't think of it. We got to London, and we had this big thing, thing there, a, a concrete top on it. This is probably bigger than this table. And I said to Danny, "What's that? What's that water running down there? That doesn't look right." And I didn't know anything about that, you know, just being a nurse, didn't know anything about that. He said, oh, that's nothing. It's, well. And finally, I called Johnny Gibson. That's how I ended up getting on the board of health. I said to him, we need to uh, 
of our septic system. <laughs> and he comes in the air and he's, it's, it's bigger than this room that the, the thing, and it's not that cheap. <laughs> I was like, oh. He said, well, you need a new septic system. I said, what's the septic system? Mm. So but, you learn. Yeah. And then he put me on the board of health. There you go. The only way that you could really, um, you know, with regards to tight tanks, and most of them are up around the lake, it would be to pay attention to the assessor's conveyance. Oh, yeah, just to say, the purchase and Right, stuff, and then what we could that. do is if you see a property around the lake that was recently conveyed, we could send out a letter, hey, welcome to Menden, guess what, you have a tight tank in this year, why in this, in case you're wondering. You know, I do that um, with, I monitor the uh, assessor's conveyances for parcels of property that I know are not tied into town sewer because there's a mandatory sewer tie-in um, requirement when a property is conveyed. Okay. So okay. I monitor the assessor's conveyances. Not to give you some work. No, you do that. I think. Right. You, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if we see exactly. one on around the lake, we yeah. can send them a letter and yeah. say, "Hey, welcome to Menden. Yeah. Where's your pumping work? Hey, right. Yeah. There you go. Per, we could even kind of yeah. use this letter and right. just yeah, just put them on notice. Yeah. Right. That's part of that running process. It's still counting. Right. <laughs> well, she sends a list out to a lot of people. Right. So not, it's not a formal running list anymore? It's just a list of the addresses of the new owners or the old owners. What's the, what was that process called? Oh, well, it was supposed to be a, a routing slip. Right. And everybody was going to check off. off. Right. What was that program? Yes. Uh, no. Oh, uh, Viewpoint. Out. Yes. So that was first used when you first started, right? Viewpoint? Yeah. Right. But not for the assessors when it gets conveyed to a new owner. Mm. She sends me an email of a Word document for right. new owners. And they oh, just keep it conveyance list. I thought we were using board viewpoint when those conveyances were happening because every every department wanted to check the status of the property to see if anything had to be done to the property. Well, that's for well, the building department. That's for permit applications. That's right. viewpoint's purpose. Well, I thought it had to do with uh, back taxes, uh, building, board of health, conservation. Yeah, yeah. If it's, I don't think no. The, there was at one time. What's that? Just it's, when you apply, sorry, Jack. No. When you apply for a building permit, right? So then it's going to hit the different departments. So it hits the collector treasurer's assessor's office to verify that that's in fact the owner. Then it hits the collector treasurer's office to make sure that taxes are paid. Then say like it's for a shed, it might hit the board of health because the board of health needs to see where that shed falls on that property and make sure that shed's yeah, maintained in the set exactly. Yeah. So that's how what view how viewpoint works. Concom if the if the shed is going to be within the buffer zone. So I didn't I didn't realize that the building permit was the only trigger to viewpoint. That's the yes thing was the only trigger. Electrical, plumbing, they're all but that's under building. Yeah. So I but I was thinking that you could also trigger that same process through the town hall. Once the property was conveyed, it triggered that whole that devil right? Now, her genes and sexist records are not tied into viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because there is personal financial information that cannot yeah. be touched in that database. Okay. So Gene just prepares a, you know, a conveying sheet, you know. Yeah, the transfer sheet. Yeah, the transfer sheet. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. I get that monthly. You get that monthly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you've been using that as a basis. And that's what I do, because I gotta make sure, well, if, if they have a trash account. Where they're senior or not a senior anymore, so I got to change that rate yeah. and let them know. Right. So that's a manual thing that every department's doing, but it's not tied to viewpoint. No, it's not tied to viewpoint. Okay. okay. Thank you. And, and I love this letter. That that's funny. I oh, love this us. letter. I love this letter. But we'll cut some, we'll, we'll revise it. We'll talk to Tom. We'll yeah, my to apologies that I, I, I guess I personally didn't really know. What I was expecting to see. Awesome. I, just knew, asking, uh, I just knew what I was asking but, for based on the law. Yeah, but we have to know. That's what but I would have known that. I would have known that. Like, this is a sale operation. Well, it only came up because I, I presented it to, to a couple of homeowners. Sometimes I'll put things out. It was some field work. work. You know? What do you think, if you got this as a homeowner, what would your responses be? And that was some of the feedback I got. I'm like, oh, geez, good point. I didn't think of that. 
that actually came from somebody else. I'm like, gee, that's a good point. What is it? Well, did they have a tight tank? Were they people that did have a tight tank? No, these are people that if they, they they put themselves in shoes by have a tight tank. What, what's an operational maintenance plan? What, what is that? Mm -hmm. Like, well, if you question. freaking had a tight tank, you know. <laughs> well, but we still don't seem to know here at the table. But anyway, we're going to move on. <laughs> okay, sorry. BOH scholarship application review. All right, so there's. I got one. Yeah, you do. Yeah, so, do we want to do a thousand dollar scholarship application? I did talk to Jody confirm that we still have a thousand dollars from last year that we never sent out. Uh, so, this is the application again. I just changed the amount of instead of five hundred dollars, it's now a thousand dollar scholarship. Didn't tell me that's where the board was tending to go for this. Okay, so we get five hundred annually. We get a thousand annually. We broke it up into two five hundred dollars. Gotcha. So last year I said five hundred dollars at the top, and we gave it away. Well, could give it away to two people, but I believe we had a discussion about this. We wanted to do a thousand dollars. Right. Thinking more people would apply for it. Right. So we're doing one at a thousand or two at a thousand. That's the board's decision. Because I had to confirm with Joey to make sure that thousand dollars it's in a gift account, so okay. it can't be touched. So, so that's we, the board's discretion. We have two. We, we have two to give out. You have two thousand dollars as of right now to give out. Okay. So right. what this says is accurate, right. but we have the ability to give out two if we get two good candidates. Correct. Correct. Sure. Yeah. Everybody yeah. wins. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's great. I love that. You know, hopefully, we get somebody that's. I mean, if, if we did decide to go the road of two, 1,000, I just wonder if that first sentence has to kind of shift a little bit because it makes it look like the board's only offering one $1,000 scholarship as, as I read it. Well, I mean, it doesn't, I, I don't think it's proud to operate a scholarship or uh, of opportunity for $1,000. So if you get five, applicants and you pick the best two right i'm just saying as i read this application if i was just picking this up i mean I'm, I'm i don't know i don't know why you'd have to know that if i mean this is for high school seniors so so i'm, I'm just saying from an informational perspective if i'm picking up the application and looking at the sentence it looks to me like the board of health is offering one one thousand dollars scholarship but it doesn't say that it just says a thousand dollar scholarship application so that at this point we have two thousand dollars so right and next year we might not have two thousand so right no so but this year it's two and we get the top two yeah i just didn't know if we should spell out that we have two thousand two one thousand dollars scholarship i mean i don't, I don't know. see the point of it but again i'm again we have a different way of thinking yeah it's okay <laughs> i i would say a scholarship opportunity you're not mentioning a dollar it, it is kind of implying that it's a that's what i mean yeah yeah no. but on the other hand um it says a scholarship doesn't yeah that there. yeah we, we fortunately are in a position because of lack of applicants yes which is a downer Right. That we can give more than one. Yeah, this year. Um, but we don't have to let them so, that. But, but it's sort of non committal. I mean, what if we get five oh. applications and only one is deserving? Mm -hmm. We don't have to give the other one out. We That's can. Right. That's right. That's right. If we That's list right. that we are giving two $100,000, two one thousand. Now we're committed. Mm -hmm. uh, well, if you're going to use that same criteria, if you don't think you have any applicants that are deserving, you can. Why don't you have to award any? Why do you have to? Well, I mean, I think the people that are applying for scholarships are are doing it with knowing that you have to have some scholar. Yeah. Well, you yeah, should we get you that scholar. We have criteria, so chances right, are right. Exactly. I mean, and our yeah. criteria is pretty pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah, because at one point it used to be someone who the priority was given to someone who was studying environmental science. Okay. And that kind of got dropped yeah. because of lack of applicants. <laughs> yeah. uh, unfortunately, um, I mean, we see it in the brothers. It, it's it's hard to oh, yeah. get people yeah. to apply, and you don't know why. 
Mm. Well, uh, I think it's too bad because God, if I would have been, I would have died and went to heaven to get a thousand dollars. Oh, I, I think, I think Jesus. it would be perfectly acceptable to leave it this way. Yeah. And keep that door open because we have the resources to do two, mm. and we have the option to only do just one. Yeah. You know, I mean, you kind of feel committed when you offer one to right. do one. Right. Sometimes you have to stretch your imagination a little bit. But well, I wouldn't feel committed if the person didn't meet the criteria. To your point. And what's the criteria yeah. again? For a thing there, a the chances are. Any, I say it's very um, mutable criteria. Right. Yeah. But, but I, you I, could have somebody. Yeah. That's why you. That's why sometimes you choose and you pick. So you had possible five, and you have to pick. You felt compelled to pick, you pick. Right. I, I, so I then you can do the runner up if you want to do another one. Well, you, if you wanted to do that, if you felt, we right. got really two big candidates. Let's give the other thousand dollars a second right. behind the scene. You could, you could do that. Right. Yeah. I, I'm just saying, as, as yeah. presented, it seemed like. BOH is only offering one one thousand dollars scholarship. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I, it matters. So it, it, yeah. it, I don't, uh, you know. But again, I've seen it both ways. It's a different way of thinking. <laughs> yeah. The, the but in that case, why don't we just we, say the BOH is offering, two, offering five five thousand dollars scholarships? If it doesn't matter, then we don't have to. We don't have to meet. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I know living with the ribbon, they give three, and it says three. So in some cases, people feel they have a better opportunity, better chances, better yeah, odds. Right. There's two potentials as opposed to one. Potential. Right. So I, I can see it either way, but I, I, I don't see a problem with leaving it here. Because normally, because what's going to happen next year, we, we got to go back to just one. We'll be back to one. Right. You know, that's if. <laughs> yeah, right. it's yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe they're all three right, right, and I've also seen. It's you not know, building up an account. Right. I, I mean, I'm on the scholarship committee with the brothers, mm -hmm. and I, I've seen situations where someone was really deserving of the opportunity and the encouragement, but their application could have been a little better. Mm -hmm. But of course, that person would have had to get outside help, maybe. You know, but because you know where it's coming from and you know, the, you know, yeah. Um, well, it, you know, like our guild gives a thousand dollar scholarship and we send that information to all the schools in the area. Um, we have a scholarship committee. I, I was on it for a lot of years. And so we sent it to all the schools. In the area, but your scholarship is lucky because it's only to mend it. So you would send it to BBT, probably. Well, I do. Yeah. It has to be. It, yeah, I've been amended president. I do. All right, and then the high school. I do. Yeah, and, and then that's it. Well, Fort Daddy, well, St. Not, Giles, and yeah. St. Jones. Yeah. Those seem to be the schools that men right. hit, yeah. so that's where I send. So it has to be a mend and resident. Sorry. Right, and my son went to St. John's. Yeah. You know. And um, this year it was suggested that I also send it to the uh, attention of the athletic director. So I asked the guidance office to forward it to the athletic director. I, I took the suggestion. We'll see what happens. All right. You got all that jotted down, all these avenues you're going to send it to? Oh, Jimmy. Okay. Basically, the same people I sent it to last year. Yeah, pretty much. All right. All right, so we'll go with this. Yeah, yeah they will do it now. All right. Oh, I just a question. Given it, uh, Colony's new to the group, and it's probably the first time, first time seeing our application. Yeah. Just, what do you mm -hmm. think? I think it's. I think it's great. Yeah. I just didn't know if you had any. Some of you have been on the outside looking at it. No, curious. no, I I looked at it. <coughs> I thought it was. I thought it was uh, very thorough. Okay. Not too thorough to make the awarding. Right. All right. Yeah. All right. If we're done with that, we'll go to uh, BOH admin updates. Okay, great. Nothing. Nothing. Does anybody have anything for Jack? Not that I can think of. 
I have good words for Jack. Oh. Yeah. All right, Colin. Next item on the agenda, health agent updates, please. Uh, so we still haven't heard anything from um, the attorney for Foggy Not Bad. I did check the Worcester Registry of Deeds. Um, he has not conveyed the property to uh, as of this meeting. Um, I was thinking about just where um, the attorney has not acknowledged that he is in fact representing the property owner. Maybe um, sending the letter to the property owner. We have already put the property owner on notice that the septic system has failed and he is required um, under the regulation to bring the property into compliance within two years. I was thinking about uh, changing the letter a little bit that I had sent to the attorney and maybe approaching it as you know as a reminder. You know, um, you had discussed with me before about the conveyance of the property and go into what his responsibility is with regards to bring the property into compliance. So I was thinking about doing something like that only because he told me that he was represented by this particular council and I find it odd that the particular council has not acknowledged the um, correspondence. How would you send a letter? Email. I sent it by email. Okay. Um, but it, Do you think it's the point where we need to send it registered mail? Um, you know, I, that's a good point, and I think maybe that we should send it by regular mail. Like first class or something like that? Um, both. Okay. Let's do that first and see if that attorney, if the attorney reaches out. Well, to even the, the homeowner. I thought you were going to address the homeowner and I could do both. So if you if you want to address the homeowner first and you know maybe that way then we know that it was received. Mm -hmm. Um then it's kind of up to the homeowner to respond in some fashion. Well, are we able? I you know we had a circumstance before where an attorney got involved. I didn't know at that point. Um, Once an attorney, you know, acknowledges representation, you cannot reach out to. Okay, but we haven't had that. We yeah, right. Right. So okay, that's what I'm saying. Okay. So um, because he's transferring ownership to his son, does it make a difference? No, his grandson. His grandson. I mean, well, so that's not a family yes. member. No. So that's not going to make any difference. difference. So uh, somehow, in, I thought. That they had to have a an agreement that had, that either they took money off for that for doing that and or something they could in fact you know lower the purchase and sale price yeah. but the thing is is that any financing institution is going to be looking for a COC which obviously he can't produce they could hold that money back and hold it in escrow and lose the COC right. But I would personally like to see some sort of enforceable agreement executed. Right, yeah, that's prior what I'm to saying. The, yeah. Prior to the sale. Wasn't it expressed that the present owner was going to be the bank? Correct, and that's, so, what, and that's why we keep on checking the registry of deeds. We check that on a regular basis. So even if money were put in escrow, it's not going to be a bank holding that money. Right. Because the owner of the property today is the bank he's taking a note so right. we could be told but it's kind of hard to confirm because we mm -hmm. can't call rockland trust mm -hmm. yeah but he's right. got such a failing septic system well it's failed absolutely right. and yeah. there's affluent to the surface i mean that's right. a well, first of all it's a right and so, we looked uh, at it today there's and, no way it'll pass title five no it's not yeah. going to and we looked at it today jack and i went out on a couple of field trips and um we looked at it today and it's stable that's good yeah we're, we're it is stable. Stable. Yeah, yeah it's it's stable i haven't seen anything so i think we'll do both maybe send we'll send the letter to the attorney by regular and certified and then i'll redraft the letter to the property owner as well send them out concurrently yeah, yeah. What if the lawyer didn't respond because he's not representing the client? They usually would let you know that, though. They would usually say, you know, that I didn't find heat. You know, I have a pretty good rapport with him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
I have a pretty good rapport with the property owner, and he was, you know, forthcoming with that information. So the other thing that just crossed my mind is, is that email address. But we got that out right off of his um, website. Website. Yeah. We need to get a bounce back. Yeah, we need to get a bounce back out of. Yeah, because I always get a bounce back. <laughs> so I think I think that now that we've talked it out, I think that's a <laughs> Okay. All right. So that that item is under control. Yep. Yeah. Um, 10 Northbridge Street, the property owner telephoned me the other day to let me know that he secured funds from the bank and he's going to be moving forward with the uh, upgrade of the septic system. Fantastic. We reached out, I, we did ask him with the name of the engineering firm, we reached out to the engineering firm, we haven't heard back yet. That was part of our field trip today, we went up to look at the system, the system was stable, but there wasn't, there wasn't a, a, a proper pole there for, to lift the lid up. So I sent a text message to uh, Stevie Donatelli and asked him because I know he cares yeah. when I'm around with him, and then he'll let me know. All right. Um, did he say who the local engineering firm? Yep. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Yep. Good. Yep. And we left a message. Yeah, so we know we, we, we know back. it's a local local people we deal with. We're good. Yep. Who would you say it was? Lynn 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 Lynn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we see them a lot, and yep. yeah. we know things get done. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So that's fantastic. That's great news. Yeah. So I thought so too. I thought so too. Yeah. Happy for the whole one. I'm you happy know, for to the get that. I'm happy for the whole one. I know why. I see another car there, another truck, another. That I I went by today, and so I. I you know, if my husband's in the car, I like I said, oh, for God's sake, that this guy said that truck in his garage and this truck over here and that truck over there. And, and well, he'll say to me, Why do you care? Yeah. Well, because he's got too many people living in that place with that subject yeah. comes daily. Well, there's a the tenants downstairs and they each have you. And they each have a vehicle. And then he's living back there because he's not working. Oh. And, um Boston any longer. So his pickup truck is there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, it's so crazy. I don't know why. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm the same way. You know, I come down North Ave, you know, every day and go back on my I'm like, I have a crooked neck. I can't go by, you know, I can't go by that property without, you know, looking. I stop in the morning and, you know, I was telling Jack one morning, I, you know, I stopped and whatnot, and the guy opens up the door in his pajamas, and he's like, oh, can, you know, can I help you? I'm like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm and, you know, I introduced myself and said, I'm good, but, you know, you can go back. Yeah, but your subject is amazing. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm just looking at it. No, good, so we, we got progress. Yeah, on on yeah. Northbridge um, Street, yeah. and, and I believe in, in uh, North Avenue as well. Um, 43 Blackstone Street, however, uh, they have not responded, so... I think that um, we should probably consult with Karis on what would be the next step. I mean, okay. is um, a condemnation order the proper step? Or maybe we'll seek her advice and her opinion first, because we're at our end as far as what you've been doing. Yeah. Mm. Maybe a lot of times a letter from an attorney's office yeah, we'll get them to respond as well. Yeah. As well. Yeah. yeah. So I thought maybe we should consult with Karis. I'm good with that. And see what she has Send to say. Send her an email mm -hmm. with what the steps we've taken and as many dates as you can, so mm -hmm. she can follow along and see what she says. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I can't say that when I'm driving by, I'm seeing anything bubbling out of the ground or anything like that. I'm not seeing a large number of people living there. I'm seeing, I haven't actually seen any people. I just see vehicles coming and going. Um, so. But the thing, I, the thing is, is that the property was conveyed, you know, without complying with um, Title Five oh, regulations, uh, right? So what is that action? What does that look like? We complied and we provided the notification per the regulation. Now we're right. at our end there. You know, what is our next step? Is our next step at the council sending them a letter to see if that grabs their attention? Is it the condemnation or is it legal action? Well, the other thing to maybe look at, and I don't know how it works, but trailers are outlawed in the town. 
they are not. And is there any um, existing non-conforming? Well, that's like one of the last. I think this there's another one up on Northbridge Road. Mm -hmm. um, but those are the only two that I can think of. There was one on Taft Ave that uh, was purchased and dismantled. They built a hole there. So that Which might be zoning. Yeah, that might be one of two left, but um, I don't know. I, I'm not familiar with all the rules yeah. surrounding that Take trail up as yeah. to, I mean, essentially, if they've got a um, cesspool and they're not in compliance, then the structure shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. Well, well that's why I say about is the con orders of condemnation the next I, I don't know if the homeowner that's ignoring that's right. us realizes that. Yeah. Well, it's a defined bylaw that was actually established through the select board. Right. Well, the thing is, right, but it was there a, um, an acknowledgement for pre-existing or pre existing non conforming structures? Because if there is, then that structure can stay there until... Well, as long as they're in compliance. But did they also add that verbiage, though? I'd have to look at the bylaw. Yeah, yeah I'm be... probably mixing town and state yeah. mm -hmm. rules. Yeah, because see, zoning will only deal with the zoning component of the property, not necessarily with the property at a, at, at a whole. All right. Yeah, so I'm thinking maybe in the last five years that bylaw was drafted. I'll or... look at it. I'll look at the bylaw, yeah. and um, we can make Karis aware of that as well. Yeah, I, I was going to say just for added yeah, information. Okay. Yeah. Um, regardless of the fact as to whether the trailer has the right to exist or mm -hmm. not, um, mm -hmm. I didn't know if that was just would help her in her thought process as to how we can get this person to, to right. acknowledge. Is that, that the um, house next to Charlie Mads? The, yeah. I mean, not the house. Yeah, the, the trailer. trailer used to belong to the Gillettes. Yeah. And the homeowner lives right around the corner on Bacon Court. Right. I mean, I, I don't understand why they're not dialing in and saying, yeah, I need your help. Can you give me, you know, Mm -hmm. Give me some advice on what the next steps are I need to do. Get rid of the I don't, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Well, that's so the house. I mean, the constable <laughs> goes to the house and you, yeah. Two times. you, you can't bring us up. Mm -hmm. and, and did you call the, you went to the town, the owner's house? No, oh, I did not oh. call. Oh. Alan spoke with those. Oh, the constable. Right. Yeah. Oh. Served. The constable oh, okay. served them two times. Oh. Oh, for God's sakes. Yeah. I thought you meant that you went to the trailer and nobody. Well, that's how I found out who the owner was. I, oh. have a, I got a complaint from a resident. I followed it, it up. Okay. It wasn't Board of Health related. And I let the homeowner know that it wasn't Board of Health related. But I was trying to head off a problem for the homeowner. And the homeowner took care of the two vehicles that were in the driveway that were probably purchased at an auction because one of them didn't even have a door on it. Oh. And, it and it's probably the kind of business this gentleman is in, which is which right. is fine. Yeah. Um, and he understood, but there's still three vehicles on the property that are abandoned. Mm -hmm. Don't be notified. And, you know, mm. um, I said, that's that's building department. So I said, you may hear from them. I said, I'm you know, there was uh, abandoned trash cans. That was the only thing that really related to the Board of Health, but I talked to the gentleman on the phone and uh, he was amicable. So do you know how many people are actually in the trailer? Well, they, they seemed to change. At one point, there were, looked like there were, you know, two or three little kids along with at least one adult. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen any little kids out in the yard playing or getting on the school bus. Um, so I'm assuming they're adults living there now. Sometimes there's one mid-sized car, sometimes there's two, sometimes days go by and there's none. Because I, I wonder if given the, uh, the bylaws in place and other groups could also be attacking this problem. Yeah. Like the select board. Well, Jack tried that by relaying to a building about the unregistered vehicles, right? Is that yeah, we know about the police in town because that's their purview to handle unregistered vehicles on property. 
I mean, well, I was thinking just specifically with regards to the trailer piece. That's yeah. that seems to be our concern. And that's, well, that comes under what, Board of Selectmen? Well, they were the ones that, that's how the zoning, that's how the bylaw got created. Mm -hmm. Originally, if you recall, we had one situation where they needed to move into a trailer mm -hmm. out of need, and there was nothing in place. This is going back about six, seven years ago. And so the Board of Health at the time created a form. We created a fee and we created a form. Yeah. Just nothing existed. Or, because Board of Health had to go out and inspect the sewer and water tie ups. Make sure everything's okay, right? So then, but from that, um, it developed into a little bit more and then it became something that the, I don't know, put it forward. But the, the bylaw is now structured such that the, such that the permitting is actually from the select board. Mm -hmm. As long as it meets the requirements of the BOH building, building. one other one, conservation. Well, I say conservation. As long as those other boards are, are happy, then the select board would issue the ability to to do it. Mm -hmm. That's how that's how I understand that. Mm -hmm. And that's now. That's kind of, that's what's in place now. Yeah. It's you have to read it though, because if it's our, you know. Yeah. If the like, if there's a. Paragraph in there with your guys, or if they, you know, default on it. Um, but the other thing too, though, is is going back to what, what you said, Alan, that there was an adult and possibly two children living in that. That's another angle that the board could have, could approach with um, regards to the uh, state sanitary code because there is a square footage allowed per person. So can't imagine that a trailer has square footage. You mean it has to be a minute? I, I, right. yeah, yeah. I, I believe it was two units side by side that were set on a foundation. So mm -hmm. I think it's a reasonable amount of square footage. And again, I haven't seen any children there for a while. They, if I remember correctly, that could have been two years ago. Okay. And they could have been like the first sign of life after the it, it, it transferred. Mm -hmm. But again, it, it appears that it's probably a cash deal. And that's why it's... Mm -hmm. It's okay. hard for us to get some cooperation mm -hmm. yeah. um, because we can't go to a bank or an insurance company and say, hey, this isn't right. Right. Um, I mean, for all we know, that there is no insurance on that. I'll do a lot and we'll get Harris as much mm -hmm. information yeah. as we can do some more research on it. Um, we took care of the landfill. 55 on um, Hadford Ave West. This was a property that was brought to our attention by the uh, administrix of the property. The um, property owner has deceased. And uh, the daughter. Who is the administrator? Um, Hope Tate. Oh, Hope. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm very, very familiar with this. Mm -hmm. So are we. <laughs> well, I'm much more familiar. Yeah, I'm $36,000. Oh. Wow. Because. When they lived next door to me when they were uh, kids, and, and uh, the father was an alcoholic and the mother was a drug addict. Oh. So I had those kids all the time. I got them dressed to school, I took them everywhere, you know. And I had my my own three granddaughters and grandson, and we go every place. Mm. So um, Peter, and, and I knew Peter, Peter, when you know, we first moved there was like eight years old. <laughs> so um, he ended up uh, having to sell the place because he didn't have any money. And I mean, and he didn't have any money because he was drinking all the time. And, uh, and she was in prison at the time. The mother was in prison. And uh, so he was selling it to Kevin Meehan. So he said he had all this, this stuff on the property. So he said, you know, I, I just didn't, I, you know, I will pay you back when he gives me the money. Um, it, we need $36,000. So because I love the kids and, you know, I said to Danny, well, look, we could get a loan from the bank because I was on the board of the, you know, um, you know, bank and you know, I said, you know, I'll get a loan. So we gave him the 
money. And he said, as soon as they pass the papers, they'll give it back to us. So now we're in Portugal. And I get a phone call saying that Peter sold the property. You know, I said, oh, that's good. You know, we'll get our money. Peter also bought that piece of crap <coughs> with the money that he got from the thing. So we never got our money back. Mm -hmm. So we have a lien on that house, actually, which hopefully they're going to, um, it's for sale. It's, right. So what happened was, was that um, Hope contacted the uh, Board of Health office um, to uh, complain that um, there was a bunch of refuse and garbage surrounding the property right. and that there were two individuals that were in the property that were not welcome to be there, that she had advised them to leave the property. They refused to leave the property. And in turn, she shut off the electricity to the property, which also shut off the water and the septic system. And she also stated that at one time, the septic system had um, surfaced and was, you know, in the driveway. So that was a concern, I, but I explained to her um, during our conversation that um, if we did go to the property or when we did, do go to the property, that if there are any deficiencies in the property, it would be her responsibility as the administrator of the property. And so she, I think, was looking for the board to evict the squatters. Right. But I told her that is not your job. Right. It, well, it's not, it's not for the board to evict individuals unless the property is unfit for human habitation. The fact that there was no water, the fact that there was no toilet, deemed it unfit for human habitation. So Jack and I went. And uh, the property was atrocious. Oh, I know. And okay. two police officers were on site also. Um, long story short, we went into the property. Um, the property was atrocious. And um, spoke with the individual that was there. Uh, he was, you know, down on his lot, had no place to go. Drug um, addict. They were drug addicts. They yeah, I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm both because uh, Amber, who and, you know, I mean, we're here together, and this is our stuff. Amber just went into rehab mm -hmm. because she was a drug addict. And she, um, they came to me and told me what was happening that they were going to, they were trying to sell the house and and that she was going there and uh, that they were, uh, they didn't. Say, say that those people weren't leaving, but because but I thought they were because. Well, the good news is this: is that you know, been working with her and talking to her and following up with her. We specifically addressed the garbage that was outside, and there was no reason why that that could not be brought down to the curb, and you know, would have the um, curbside trash pick up pick it up. She did bring some down. Jack and I went there today. Um, there is some more. She knows that tomorrow is the trash pickup day, so I'm hoping that she brings down some more of it and we'll go back and we'll monitor it. But the good news of it all is to, you are correct, it is for sale, it is under agreement, right. but the better news is, is that those two individuals are left. Yeah. So uh, she has told us that she secured the property when Jack and I went there today. We didn't know we see so much of secured property. I told her to secure it because they could return, right. you know, once they Well, you know, I mean, I, the, how would you have to secure it? Would it have to be a, a metal bar across right, the Right, exactly. That's what I said to her. A yeah. board right across it, screw right. it in. Right. That's how it in downstairs as well. Right. And you screw yeah. it in. Right. Um, so anyway, still working with her as far as cleaning up the exterior of the property. Apparently, the individual that's interested in purchasing the property is going to come in, may level the property. I'm not he sure. Is. I know who he is. Oh, OK. Right. So the good news is, is that, number one, there's no longer two people right. in that 
in that house. Right, so that's great from a board of health. Number two, exactly. Yeah. Our job is done with the exception right. of monitoring that all that garbage, because there's a lot of it, is going to be brought down. But this person who's purchasing it is right. going to take care of everything. Yeah. Um, are they on the subscriber list? Yes, they are. Good. Fantastic. Yep. So we know they have the ability to right. get it from where it is to the curb right. and get it picked see, up. What happened, what happened was Hope did, does not live with them. She, no, she lives in Oxford. She lives in Oxford with yep. her step grandfather and uh, the baby. Yeah, mm -hmm. his baby. Mm -hmm. He's not a baby now, he's six. I think mm -hmm. he's a baby, but six. So, um, and, and, uh, you know, sad. It's it's a, such a sad story. I can't even tell you how sad it is because it breaks my heart. Um, All right, let's see what Mark. I knew the woman that lived there for years. Yes. Olive. Yeah, Olive. Yeah. And I was in her house when yeah. Olive lived there. Yeah. And so yes. when I went, when I went there, yeah. I was like. Oh my oh, God! The mother of the <laughs> but I, my 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 understanding is that the man who is buying it is very reputable in town. He's Good. a town person. Um, he is um, he is a builder and uh, you know done done things. So he's going to buy it. He's going to build a, a nice thing on it. Mm -hmm. oh, but it is it, a lot of rock. Oh, tons. Well, look at the front porch. That's our ledge. So anyway, so the good news is, is that we'll continue to monitor it. Happy to hear about that. I um, stay in touch with Hope, um, and uh, she's pretty much, you know, promised us that she will get that trash down to the crowd and get it picked up. Um, she seems very... Um, she's a good girl. Yeah, she does. She really she does. I've had some yeah. really decent conversations with her, yeah. too about it and you know and i think that she appreciates the fact that the board is here um, right. to help her but right. she appreciated the help that the board yeah. um, gave her in her time and yeah she's a good girl and and she's i mean i to believe that mm -hmm. you know i mean i <laughs> i would get them dressed at the school do their hair it's about to get on the school bus and you know they'd be there and it, it, it just was like and i used to go to school to make sure that they were you know they didn't fall through the cracks Joyce. Joyce. Stop I love talking. You. um and then finally uh with regards to the uh food establishments that we continue to receive on a daily basis, two and three mobile food trucks. Yeah. I think that uh, Vanderbach Farm is going to have a very busy season. We sent them uh, an email the other day to let them know we took a look at their list because they are booked every weekend through October 27th and some of their vendors are not permitted right. registered yet. Mm -hmm. So we sent them an email the other day and said, hey, look at, we see that you have you know, these vendors, they're not permitted yet reminded them of the uh, food truck safety guidelines and the setbacks for, um, you know, from buildings and from other food trucks. And um, just continuing with the uh, food establishment inspections too. Busy time. Do we know what the status of the other line is? That, I was just going to say that. You did. Well, well, why? They, they took a housing lot and, and it, I mean, it's residential property, and they made a parking lot out of it. Vanderbox? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Commercial. Yeah, I don't know. So I just didn't know if, 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 if you've been up there, if you would notice it because it had been shut, it had been closed by order of. I haven't been up there yet this season because okay. then, you know, they're not. Right. Yeah. Uh, I just didn't know. If yeah. That. I haven't been by it either. Okay. But, you know, because first I went by it, I thought, oh, somebody's building a nice house there. Yeah. Because it was all cleared and everything. The next thing I see, is him who's very single minded I mean, but, uh, and he's marking off spaces. I'm thinking, oh, you know, I was going to say to him, hi, how are you? But I thought I'm not going to do that. So then the next time I go by, it's being paid. And I'm thinking, this is this is residential property. How can you be putting a parking lot there? 
And then the last I heard that they said you can't put a parking lot there. Well, fortunately, that doesn't come under our. Yeah. Okay. You know, yeah. Um, I did run into David Andelman. They're getting the driver ready. Yep. Well, I'm going down there. Okay. I had that. Um, how did you run into him? Um, I uh, observed him having right? coffee uh, with an, uh, an associate, so I didn't talk to him for an extended period of time. But oh. I, I did acknowledge him. I always enjoy running into him. I'd love to him. get his phone number. Uh, that I don't have. But he, you know, he said to me that, you know, he was out and they were getting the drive in ready. So I, you know, said, great, you know, looking forward to it. Yep. And I, I kept it short. He was, you know, with an associate. The 27th. I'm going okay. to inspect it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. If he wasn't with someone, I would have gone into a little more conversation. But right. Not the place. That was the first date I had with my husband. Was that the drive-in? Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna get that put on the screen. <laughs> In one they when they when they the, 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 the commercials of the game, we're gonna have joints dedicated to joints. Yeah. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. yeah. That's and, then we, yeah. And, and then we went to Millie Mitchell's first, and then we oh there you go. There you go, Millie Mitchell's. Yeah, that's a that's a yeah. Cool back. Yeah. Okay. Back in the day. Yep, I remember. That's all I have. All right. All right. Any community service announcements? I have no. no. Outstanding old business? I got nothing. Topics not anticipated? I have one. Uh, it had come to my attention within the last four years, probably beyond now. It's something I know Jack had reached out to you about. I was interested to understand the protocols and the action plans for someone who is reporting what they believe may be a suspected food poisoning. I have to speak with the person directly. That's Correct. Right. That's right. Absolutely. Positively. Is there any kind of timeline that you typically like to do that? Within? And, and immediately. And when did the event happen? Um, well, the uh, eating of the food mm-hmm. on Sunday. And did they, are they hospitalized? No. Were they, did they go to the hospital? No. What makes them think they have to them? Well, that's what I'm asking. Right, so I need to speak with them. I really yeah. yeah. asking. Okay, that's why I didn't want to. No, 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 <laughs> that's fine. That's, that's, no, no, I know. Right. No, but... no, I have to speak with the person and have, have them give me a call. Okay. Yeah. And um, I can um, speak with them and then I would um, get some pertinent information on it. I would look at the establishment. Yep. I'd go back on the reports and look to see um, if we had any previous issues with. You know whether it was a temperature control thing or some yeah. uh, whatever the issue was, yeah. um, and uh, then I go from there. Okay. Yep. I'll do that. The other individual wanted to remain anonymous, but they're going to release that to convert you. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. All right. So if we have nothing else, it looks like our next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, March twenty seventh. Correct. And we'll probably have to be at the library. I'm going to assume the select board is still going to be doing their thing. So we prefer the library. Oh, yeah, it's fine. You don't like this? Well, no, so it's fine with me. But okay, we're we'll we, we kind of getting comfortable at the library. So we'll, we'll try to get here. She looks cold. Okay. Terrible. She's the warmest woman I know. She's shivering. She's shivering next to me. No, okay. Uh, All right. So now I'm feeling guilty. 27th. Yes. Of March. We'll, yes. We'll do 6:30. 6:30. Yeah. And we're, we're going to try to do it here. Okay. okay. I'll refer to it as the fishbowl. Fish. That's right. I just typed it. There you go. <laughs> the All right. right now. All right. With, with, with that said, can I have a motion to adjourn? Move. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I don't know if anybody's joined tonight. I kept looking because every time I was going to say something back. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope that that's.